Well, I was I was telling everybody earlier that if if uh, I should have gone first and Greg Halet should have gone after me because he solved all of our problems, uh, uh, all the problems that I have, he solved them uh, during his presentation. But this was something that we did back in 06 and 07, and we've been doing this for about 16 years um, before anything about bale grazing ever came out. So uh, this is this is pre that for sure. And I want to give Kevin Laurent, he was the one that really came up with this idea and said, David, I've got this project I want you to try, but I don't want to try it on this to any producer because I'm afraid it may or may not work. So uh, I was a guinea pig, and, and we tried it, and it really worked good. Uh, what our purpose is, and, and you can read through that all you like to, but the, the primary focus is we're going to try to uh, match the needs of the cow with the production cycle of that cow. So uh, that's, that's our main purpose. Uh, some, some goals are to uh, apply that strategic approach to winter feeding, matching those forage resources to cow production cycle, minimize supplemental feeding, minimize feeding waste areas. Uh, we've been over that a good bit this morning. Maximize more uniform nutrient recycling on pastures and maximize the number of grazing days. Like I said, this was all pre-bale grazing days uh, uh, before any of that started. So. One of our plans, our plan needs to be about September the 15th is our ideal time to wean those calves, uh, but no later than October the 1st. Uh, we, and you can fertilize your paddocks as you rotate off. Uh, have, try to have all the fertilizer. We try to have any, any fertilizer we put on uh, nitrogen wise, we have try to have that done by the 15th of September. Uh, and then in a, like in a 30 day pasture rotation, you could spread that out from mid August to mid September reducing the weather risk. Any more, if I don't know for sure that it's gonna be a rain, I don't put on any nitrogen because I there's been years that I put nitrogen on, no rain, we didn't get any benefit, that was money poured down the drain. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed hay to dry cows immediately after we wean. Uh, we're gonna begin strip grazing stockpile grass approximately one to two months before the beginning of calving season, depending on the amount of stockpile grass we have accumulated. Uh, we're a spring calving herd. Uh, and unlike grazing in the summer, kind of like Greg was talking about, that the whole start at the water source and move away from the water source is, is kind of how we do it. And we don't do any back fencing. Uh, we, we, some of the benefits, we create a stockpile of higher quality forage without an alternative forage crop or additional acreage. Uh, dry cow hay consumption is lower. Uh, we use a lot less hay feeding this time of the year. Uh, dry cow requirements are much lower. Mid gestation, she's only requiring 6.2% protein, 45% TDN. Early lactation, it bumps up to 10%, 11% protein, about 60% TDN. We wanna utilize our stockpile forage when our cows' needs are the highest. Uh, that's just a graph that, that kind of shows uh, uh, the TDN and crude protein and hay and stockpile grass, and then the cows' uh, crude protein and TDN requirements, it kind of just, just goes right there together, as you can see from October uh, on through to March. Uh, and hopefully April 1st, in this area, we're turning out on spring grass, we hope. Uh, these are some forage samples we took uh, back in 06, 07, and 08. Uh, as you can see, our protein ranged anywhere from 11% to 17% and from 61 to 63% TDN uh, for an average of about 14.6% protein and 61.8-62% TDN. So the forage samples that we've collected uh, over the years, uh, you know, it, it's Stockpile grass is a whole lot better than any hay that we could ever put up, a whole lot better. Uh, our hay analysis, uh, the average that we took on the three lots, and over the years, the 16 years that we've been doing this, uh, I've got enough hay storage uh, that we keep about three years of hay in the barn, uh, so we, we sample every third year. Uh, and this. 10% protein, 51% TDN is about what we've been averaging on fescue, kind of a little bit of clover hay, fescue orchard grass hay. Uh, and then of course our, our stockpile fescue analysis is, look how much better that was than, than our hay is. And we do a decent job of putting up hay, 
Uh, I don't cut a lot of hay early in May. I just, I can't get off work and I can't get it up and, you know, just like everybody else, it's hard to do. Uh, so we're usually in that first of June, last week of May time frame, getting this hay cut on the first hay cut. So to go back to what we were talking about a while ago, what the cow's re requirements were and what our stockpile fescue and our hay, all of that, it was 1,200 pound cow nursing the calf, 11% protein, 60% TDN. We've got her, and this is completely different from the way most people do it, or they used to do it, uh, our stockpile fescue, we're feeding that stockpile fescue when her needs are the highest. And we're, and we're giving her more than what she actually needs. And same way with uh, when we put the cows in the dry lot and feeding the fescue rolled hay, 10%, 51%, her needs are only 7 and 46. So we're exceeding her needs. So we're doing a good job matching those resources to what those cows' uh, requirements are. Uh, what are some of the benefits? We reduce or eliminate the need to supplement those lactating cows to meet her nutritional needs. Uh, we're calving on the pasture, not in the mud. We've talked about that uh, a little bit this morning already. Uh, we have a less hay feeding during the money time of year. It's a lot easier to feed hay September, October, November than it is January, February, March. Y'all know how nasty it is uh, and can get. So uh, I think, think this helps, helps with that a little bit. Uh, we have better nutrient recycling on grazed pastures. Uh, then we can target our nutrient recycling by feeding hay on our porous pasture or paddock. And, and Greg has covered that a good bit uh, this morning. So here's our actual case study. We did 41 cows, 71 acres of stockpile fescue. We weaned on the 16th of September. Uh, we had the opportunity to go to corn stalks. Uh, there's a field behind my, beside my house that we can graze every other year. Uh, and I would encourage you if you have the opportunity to graze some of those feed stuff, those crop residues to do that. Uh, it's, it's a great forage and, and they, and the cows do really good on it. So we got to do that for about 15, 16, 17 days, whatever. Uh, then we had a little sacrifice pasture. I was waiting for Kevin to come so we could weigh the cows. Um, then we went from hay in a dry lot from the sixth day of uh, October to the 15th day of December. We had 70 days and then we stockpile grazed from the 16th of December uh, through the 31st of March. Uh, didn't feed a roll of hay that entire time. So uh, we had 106 days of that. So uh, April 1st, we turned out, uh, of course, on spring grass. Our expenses, we had, about, we had fed 80 1,200 pound rolls uh, during that dry lot period. Uh, that's 48 tons of hay at $70, and, and folks will say, well, I can buy hay for $20 a roll or whatever. Well, if you're putting it up yourself and you figure your time and your labor and your equipment and all those things, you're going to have at least $70 in it uh, uh, per ton at least. Uh, so that figured out to about a dollar seventeen per head per day. Uh, and then our stockpile expenses, we had 4.17 tons of urea at 3.35. Boy, I'd really like to grab some of that right now, because uh, that's you're not going to see that for a while. Uh, we applied that on September the 1st and 2nd. We bought 100 uh, step-in posts, four reels, two rolls of turbo poly wire. We we figured a kind of you know kind of a seven-year average. I still have some of the poly wire and some of the posts that I had when we first started in 06 and 07. Uh, that was about $67 a year. So total cost was $14.88 for roughly $0.34 cents per head per day is what we could uh, feed stockpile grass for. Uh, cattle performance, uh, cow's uh, average weight on uh, October the 6th was 12.10. Uh, average weight after the dry lot was 13.45. Uh, they gained about 135 pounds per head. Obviously, we were exceeding her needs uh, as they were in the dry lot period. As you can remember what their, their requirements are and what our hay tested, about 10% and 51% TDN. Body condition scores, I don't think they suffered at all. Uh, got a little better. Uh, first calf was born on January the 20th, 97% of the cows calf before March the 15th. And of course, the cows were, were cycling early March uh, observation. 
So our normal hay feeding period for Kentucky farmers is 120 to 150 days. So if we, we take an average of about 135 days times $1.17 plus the six pounds of soy hulls that you're going to have to feed to meet her nutritional needs, that's going to run you about $198 per head. So 70 days at $1.17, 106 days at 34 cents, that's a total cost of $117.94 per head. So you subtract the average feed, feeding period, 135 days from the, what it costs to do it, the combination, that gives you an $80.51 savings per head. Multiplied by 41 cows, we saved about $3,300 over feeding hay for 135 days that year. Uh, those are some pictures. That's in March. Uh, we're, we're strip grazing uh, all of those fields uh, after uh, most of them had calved. Uh, this is a picture in January. Uh, I was fixing to roll up the 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 uh, post, the wire, and pick up the post. And, and when people tell you about strip grazing, they get, you know, a lot of people say, well, it takes a lot of time. No, it doesn't. About two hours, I can build enough fence to last us about a week and a half or two weeks. And then in about 10 minutes, I can roll that wire up and pull those posts up and I've moved those cows for three more days. We try to give the cows enough grass for about three days is, is what, we are, what we're shooting for right now. Uh, that's just a picture of, of what the forage looks like. Uh, the yellow lines on this, on these, this farm here, this is the, the main, the home farm. Um, those are either permanent or semi-permanent electric fences. And then when we get ready to, to graze our stockpile, uh, we're making somewhere around 32 to 33 paddocks out of all those fields. And trust me when I tell you this, it doesn't take long. Most of ours are high tensile, and we just run the, run the one turbo poly wire right across there, put the step in post. It doesn't take long at all. Uh, with a good bit of talk about manure distribution, uh, they went over that while while ago. A little bit of what N P and K and in today's prices, folks, this is going to get more important all the time, all the time. Uh, and and this is a little bit the manure distribution per square foot. If you were continuous grazing, every square foot on your farm would get uh, deposited on every 27 years. Uh, rotational grazing is about seven years. Mob grazing is about one and a, one and one half years. Uh, hopefully we're cutting it down. Uh, we're doing a lot of rotational grazing, but with this, hopefully we're cutting another year or so off of that. Uh, I think it's gonna be really important to do that. That's probably my favorite picture of all time. That's in the uh, middle of February there. And uh, you know, anytime you've got a cow that's got a mouthful of grass in the middle of February is dollars in your pocket. What are some of the essentials? Our soil fertility has to be adequate. We have to be in that medium high to high range. We need to maintain a store of hay 150 days in the dry. You never know when we're gonna have a drought. So when we have a drought, you're gonna to have to feed all the way through. So you gotta have enough hay to be able to feed all the way through. So that takes a good bit of management. Uh, we need the proper fencing equipment for strip grazing. And then we must overcome the common misconceptions and our neighbors' comments about winter grazing. Folks, back in 07 and 08, this was new to a lot of folks. And they, you know, what is he doing? What, is, you know, hey, not feeding any hay? You know, that's crazy. I never heard of such. Uh, some, of, some of the misconceptions, uh, you need additional acres to stockpile fescue. You don't have to do that. That's, that's pretty obvious. Uh, cattle prefer or need hay during the winter. That is not true. I promise you. Uh, winter grazing will hurt summer pastures. I've seen no effect over the 16 years that we've, that we've been doing this. Cattle will not graze if it snows. Folks, I've seen eight inches of snow and the cows will dig down and graze. The only time they will not graze is when we have freezing rain or ice. That's the only time they cannot penetrate that snow or they can't eat that grass that's got ice on it. So then I do have to to haul out some hay. Uh, stick, stockpile fescue loses its nutritional value by February. Uh, you know, we pulled all those forage samples and that's, that's, that's not true. Uh, strip grazing is labor intensive. 
It doesn't take long. It, it, it's a pretty quick process. Um, back then, nitrogen cost too much to apply in the fall. Um, I don't know if y'all read the, the little synopsis of our opera, op, operation in there, but we did not put on any nitrogen this fall. Uh, we pulled the cows about the 20th of August and uh, put them in a the dry lot, and uh, we have a tremendous amount of forage. However, we've had really good growing conditions. We had a lot of timely rains. Uh, we were kind of in a little bit of a drought situation there, just a localized drought situation at my house. Uh, that's why we pulled the cows on August the 20th uh, and, and started feeding hay, because we were going to have to feed hay any, one way or the other. There's my two grandsons. So if anybody has any questions, uh, I can take them or not. Or let's, let's hold the questions okay. until Betty does hers, and then we'll uh, bring both of you.